Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. For years, Beijing and Washington have been circling each other in a delicate, highly strategic dance. As the communist regime works to infiltrate democratic countries and exert its influence across the globe, the U.S. continues to counter it. For China, part of that strategy means taking a less direct route, targeting America's friends instead of straight on. Today, we look at how Beijing is advancing on one of them, India. The country is among China's biggest obstacles in the Indo-Pacific. It's not an easy one to contend with, given its large population, level of technical development, and friendliness with the U.S. So to deal with India, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, is using one of its go-to tactics. That is, gnawing away at the rival country's land bit by bit. But using this strategy in the Himalayas has proved challenging for Beijing. And we'll talk about why in a moment. First, why is the power struggle between China and India critical for the United States? U.S. needs allies and partners um, in its competition against China. And there is only one other country in the world which has as many people as, as China does um, and has a large military and is a rival of China and is a country against whom China has committed aggression multiple times, and that is India. What's more, India is a major part of a region that will play a big role in America's future, the Indo-Pacific region. The U.S. strategy is the Indo-Pacific strategy. Indo itself means Indian. It refers to the Indian Ocean and India. The Indo-Pacific region spans from America's west coast to India's western coast. And this region's stability is crucial to America's well-being. The U.S. is a Pacific nation and has five states bordering the Pacific Ocean, Hawaii, California, Washington, Oregon, and Alaska. It also owns territories in the Pacific, like Guam and Wake Island. A quarter of America's exports go to the Indo-Pacific, and America's annual trade with the region stands at over $2 trillion. The Indo-Pacific also hosts more than half of the Earth's population and generates 60 percent of the world's GDP. Six countries in this region also have nuclear weapons. India is one of them. So without India, you cannot have an Indo-Pacific strategy. You cannot have an Asia-Pacific strategy. You cannot have a counter-China strategy. The U.S. sees India as a major defense partner in the region. American defense sales to the nation totaled over $20 billion last year. And last but not the least... The U.S. strategy against China is one of democracies versus authoritarian rule. And therefore, you need the world's largest democracy in your camp. But how are India and China's power struggles playing out? Let's zoom back out to the Himalayas. For Beijing, its land-nibbling strategy isn't easy to push through on the Himalayas. That area is home to some of the world's highest peaks, and its altitude stands at well over 10,000 feet. And here's another tricky part. China and India don't have an official border. The contested issue goes back 60 years. In the 1940s, the Chinese Communist Party took over China, and India became independent from British rule. Since then, the two sides never settled on an official border and even went to war over disputes. Even after a truce, there was still no official border negotiation. The two sides instead set up a buffer zone to divide the two countries and ease the tension. Though the unofficial border didn't spell the end of the argument. It's not that simple. It's a 2,000-mile it's a long border, my friend. Um, it's, not, it's not five inches. It's not one mile, it's 2,167 miles in mountain, mountainous area, which is covered by snow six months of the year. What makes the unofficial border even more complicated is that it tends to move. The landscape features snow caps, rivers, and lakes. So the unofficial border can shift depending on natural conditions. So how does a country expand its control of a difficult border like this? You need to be able to hold the valley or hold the peak. She explains that because the border area is so cold and frigid, it's challenging to station troops there all the time. So you build infrastructure so that some troops can stay there and man it, but it is primarily manned or will need to be manned by, by electronic or drone surveillance, right? 
and it it is too high up there so you can have patrolling take place your troops go patrol an outpost and come back now that is what traditionally happened and that's how china and india have been consolidating their control over the unofficial border both sides have been building up infrastructure like airstrips and roads They also have been sending troops to patrol the region. Despite the challenging geography, Beijing has been working to change the status quo. What China is trying to do is instead of your troops going patrolling and coming back, it is trying to actually build infrastructure so that the troops can stay there. But in the past decade, tensions have flared several times over the unofficial border. And each time it's mainly because China is trying to take over additional territory and uh, change the ground reality in parts where it believes it needs to uh, bolster its own defense. In 2014, Chinese troops tried to build a road inside Indian territory. In response, Indian troops set up a camp nearby. Chinese forces later withdrew. China and India faced off once again in 2017. But three years later, clashes between the two turned deadly. In 2020, Chinese troops again entered India's claimed side of the unofficial border. A fight broke out. India lost over 20 soldiers. Beijing says it lost four. A months-long standoff followed. Right now, the two sides are in the process of pulling troops out. They just had their 12th round of talks this August. In the last skirmish which took place in 2020, India did lose some, some territory in the sense that India can no longer patrol one or two of those peaks, which is a problem. Um, going ahead, unless India is able to stop China, there will be more peaks that India will not be able to control. And so in the long run, it will be a problem. It's not a problem right now. The question is 10 to 15 years from now, what is going to be? Not immediately. Pande says India does have an option. India would have to continue to build its military infrastructure, its roads, highways, um, airports um, on, you know, uh, and helicopter pads on that high altitude um, and invest more in its, in its troops. As the two nations grapple with the border situation, Beijing appears to have been trying to outwit India through other means. That is, by eating away at territories belonging to a mutual neighbor, Bhutan. Bhutan is a Buddhist kingdom sitting on the edge of the Himalayas. It's slightly larger than the size of Maryland. Recently, China has started building villages on Bhutan's territory, establishing roots there in just a few years. News outlet Foreign Policy reports that right now, Beijing has built three villages, one military base, two Chinese Communist Party administrative centers, and five police outposts. What does that infrastructure have to do with upping the pressure on India? To understand this, let's take a look at the map. Bhutan is in a unique situation, stuck between China and India. Based on the Chinese Communist Party's actions, it appears that what Beijing really wants is a section of land located in western Bhutan. Beijing has already built a village there, and Chinese officials have said that if Bhutan hands over that western land to China, Beijing would release its claim to land in the north. But what's so important about this piece of land in the west? If Beijing gains control of the area, it would give the regime an edge in its military competition with India. That's because the area is only 60 miles from one of India's weak points, a narrow strip of land that connects most of India to its northeastern state. The strip is called the Siliguri Corridor. Military strategists call it Chicken Neck. And India has long feared that China could seize the neck and cut off the bulk of India from its northeast.